Tell us about your tattoo about Ahimsa. What is that concept? And yeah, give us your Ahimsa story. Yeah, so currently I have one tattoo. It's Ahimsa, and I'll explain what that is. It's on my right arm. For me, it symbolizes the commitment to this word and this concept and taking action on it, not just thinking about it. Ahimsa comes from the yoga world. It's the first step in yoga philosophy. And way before you're going to practice your meditations or your breathing or your postures, Ahimsa means nonviolence and compassion. And when it's applied to a yoga practice or a spiritual practice, it's saying that whatever you're doing, you need to have this intention because if you are hurting yourself or hurting another person in the process of the spiritual journey, then you're not really making progress. You're going backwards. Yoga is also known as union or yoking connection to the world, to the entire world, to all beings. So if you're, say, for example, harming yourself or say you're doing this very rigorous power yoga, but you you have joint pain, but you're still going through it. You're like, oh, I need to do this. I have to do this. It's not applying the rule number one in the the yoga journey, which is take care of yourself. Because when you can take care of yourself, you can then naturally extend that compassion over to beings everywhere. And I committed to that. <laughs> now, while I was getting the tattoo, I was thinking to myself, well, is it really ahimsa <laughs> to get <laughs> a uh, puncture into your skin and put ink on your arm? So there's definitely some humor there that I look back and I laugh at. But I am committed to compassion. And if I were to commit to one thing, I call that onto myself and hope that any listener is, would get more inspired to, to say, to ask yourself, how can you be more compassionate to yourself? And when you do that, it's natural to give. Thanks for going into that. And it makes me curious to hear a little more about your yoga journey, how yoga I feel like a lot of what you just shared is connected to yoga and yogic principles, ahimsa being uh, Sanskrit and yeah, from yoga sutras and other places, that concept. So let's hear a little bit about how yoga came into your life, how uh, like the training you got and yeah, tell, tell us about that journey. I would love to. So there are many parts to the journey, but I'll just share the part that really drove me to study yoga. When I was about 15 or so, like I said, after I moved to Israel, I was looking for practices. I found power yoga on YouTube and I would watch these videos and do them once or twice a day. I didn't have a yoga mat at the time and I thought you're supposed to practice on something beyond the floor. I practiced on a blanket and I was slipping and I was doing these really hard poses when I shouldn't have been doing it. And, but there's something really healing about practicing yoga. And I always knew it was something I wanted to do. Later on in my life, people have told me, oh, yoga is cool, but try this, try this, giving me direction of, of that, telling me where to go with as far as service goes. But I always knew deep down I wanted to do it. I didn't care how much money a yoga teacher makes or how, you know, uh, if it's like unstable or it's whatever. I knew I needed to do that. And at some point I travel, I was doing a, a trip through Australia and Southeast Asia, and I was in Bali, Indonesia at the time. I was going to this yoga center called the Yoga Barn. Amazing. If you ask people who are into yoga and have been to Bali, most people have been there and know what I'm talking about. I was practicing a lot of yoga. And at the time I was also studying how to ride a motorbike. At some point I had too much adrenaline. I was driving around rice fields and I fell and I couldn't lift my arm. I must've broken or torn something there in Indonesia. You know, I just had a backpack at the time and I couldn't lift my arm. But something intuitively told me to keep on going to that yoga center. 
And at some point we did a breathing practice, which was shamanic breath work. And another way to say it is you're hyperventilating and you're increasing the DMT that's being produced in your body, which what that does is it puts you in an altered state. But long story short, I had this vision that I was going to go to India and study with the yogis in the mountain, in Himalayan mountains where yoga originated and heal my shoulder and heal my life, heal my soul. And I had just enough money to pay for a 500 hour yoga teacher training course. And I knew that I'm going. <laughs> so I pay for the course. I lived in India for two months with $60 in my bank account practicing yoga in the Himalayan mountains. And it was one of the best decisions I've ever made. My shoulder was healed within a week, you know, and then I was doing, you know, I was back to my, really back to where I was supposed to, you know, back to the range of motion in my shoulder within, you know, probably within a couple of weeks or a month. And so now I, and then since then, I just wanted to share yogas with as many people as possible. And I studied in Rishikesh, India, which is, called the capital of yoga. And that's my story into yoga. And I then taught in uh, Cambodia in a retreat center and have been then teaching in the DC area for a while now. So it's interesting you have this parallel yoga background, which is taking you so many places and you weave it into your life in a lot of ways. I notice not just the Ahimsa idea, but so much of, uh, you know, you bring your music into your yoga, you bring your fitness into your yoga. It's kind of something I, I really appreciate about you is you, you weave a lot of different skill sets together. So I want to talk about some of the other skill sets too, you bring to, you bring to yoga. And so you have this personal fitness background too, that I know you're so passionate about talk a little bit about that as well personal fitness and maybe how you how that's affected yoga how yoga's affected uh, that field for you absolutely it's such an important question especially during these times because there are so many approaches to yoga and it's very challenging to teach proper anatomy in a yoga in a yoga teacher training which typically consists of 200 hours to 500 hours when the human body is so complex it's just vital that we that yoga teachers know more about the human body i have a history of back pain i injured my thoracic spine when i was younger and when i would practice yoga there are many times that my back would hurt and I was saying, why would this be happening? With my background in personal training and physical fitness training for multiple communities and more study in anatomy, because I realized I needed to learn more to understand my back. I don't want to be not practicing ahimsa. I don't want to be harming people with my classes. And then realizing that even in my program, we did yoga therapy for back pain. I'm then learning, wow, you know, like people with any issues in the spine shouldn't be folding. So I got on this rabbit hole of learning so much more about anatomy and integrating personal training and experience with anatomy. And then also other modalities like Qigong. I'm realizing that just doing sun salutations or practicing a conventional yoga class is not enough in this day and age where we can bring so much more. So my yoga classes are also, let me take a step back. My yoga classes are just the, my story into greater health. I'm teaching what I've learned and what I've experienced in my life, whether stuff that I learned from 12 years old, moving to a different country, all the way to studying in the Himalayan mountains. And it's just so important to tune in even if you're listening now and you're taking a yoga class and you're realizing that your back is hurting after yoga class question that and dive deep what are you doing in the in the class maybe you're pushing yourself too far but it's actually about 
connection and healing. And I want that for you.